There are some supplements and some things that are safer, certainly safer, and that in cases where you're doing all the right behaviors, you're exercising and eating correctly, and you're still having trouble with sleep, that can be beneficial for falling and staying asleep. Now, I want to be very clear. I am not pushing supplements. I'm just pointing you towards some things that have been shown in peer-reviewed studies to have some benefit. The first one is magnesium. There are many forms of magnesium, but certain forms of magnesium can have positive effects on sleepiness and the ability to stay asleep, mainly by way of increasing neurotransmitters like GABA, which help turn off the DPO, the kind of thinking about the future duration path outcome analysis, and make one sort of um, one's mind kind of drift in space and time and make it easier to fall asleep. There are a lot of forms of magnesium out there, but one in particular is magnesium three and eight, T H R E O N A T E, which you have to check to see if this right is right for you. Check with your doctor. But magnesium three and eight is associated with transporters in the body that bring more of it into cells that allow people to feel this kind of drowsiness and help them fall asleep. So I personally, I can only talk about what I personally do. I personally take three or 400 milligrams of magnesium three and eight, about 30 to 60 minutes before sleep. And it helps me fall asleep. The other thing is theanine, T-H-E-A, T-H-E-A-N-I-N-E, theanine, 100 to 200 milligrams of theanine for me also helps me turn off my mind and fall asleep. I take it 30 to 60 minutes throughout the day. Interestingly, theanine is now being introduced to a lot of energy drinks in order to take away the jitters that are associated with drinking too much caffeine or with some other things that are in the energy drinks. Energy drinks are, can be problematic. Um, they can t- contain a lot of L-taurine. I'll just tell you an anecdote. When I was a postdoc, I was drinking a lot of a particular energy drink. It has a lot of taurine in it. And uh, actually, the, the, um, the whites of my eyes, the sclera, as it's called in my eyes, turned beet red. And I went to a friend who's an ophthalmologist. Um, I said, look, I'm not a marijuana smoker. I haven't been hit on the head. I don't know what's going on. And he looked and he said, I think you've got some microvascular damage And we walked through what I was taking and doing. And he said, oh, it's probably the taurine. Excessive levels of taurine can create some microvascular damage. So if you're having the microvascular damage in your eye, you probably have microvascular damage deeper uh, in your skull. So I stopped. That's the reason why I don't take energy drinks. So just a a consideration. Again, I'm not here to tell you what to do or not do, but just want to arm you with information. The, The thing about theanine and magnesium is taken together, they do... Uh, for some people, they can make it, them so sleepy and sleep so deeply that they actually have trouble waking up in the morning. So you have to play with these things and titrate them if you decide to use them. Again, if you decide to go this route, I would not start by taking supplements. I would start by getting your light viewing behavior correct and then think about your nutrition and then think about your activity and then think about whether or not you want a supplement. We already talked about melatonin earlier. There's another supplement that could be quite useful, which is apigenin, A-P-I-G-E-N-I-N, which is a derivative of chamomile. 50 milligrams of apigenin also can augment or support this kind of um, creation of a sleepiness uh, to help fall asleep and stay asleep. A note about sleepwalkers and people with very vivid dreams. Theanine can often make your dreams very vivid. Sleepwalkers should be careful about taking theanine. Everyone should be careful about taking anything. And don't take anything without consulting your board-certified MD or healthcare professional first, okay? Um, Your health is your responsibility. I am not going to take responsibility for what you decide to do experimentally in any case, but especially as it relates to supplementation and drugs. As an important point, apigenin is a fairly potent estrogen inhibitor. So women who want to keep their estrogen levels high or at whatever levels they happen to be at should probably avoid apigenin altogether. And men take that into consideration as well. Uh, Men need estrogen also. You don't want to completely eliminate your estrogen. That can create all sorts of bad effects on libido and cognition, et cetera. So um, apigenin in some people is going to be a pretty strong estrogen inhibitor. So uh, keep that in mind. There are other things you can take to help you sleep better. Um, Those are the legal ones that at least I'm aware of have pretty broad safety margins. But again, you need to explore your safety margins with any compound. 